For thousands of years, our ancestors believed that the Earth is flat. Then as the days went by, they realized they were not right at all. They all thought that all the stars, including the Sun, orbiting our Earth. As humans' thinking abilities grew, their misconceptions about the Earth and space kept becoming clearer. But at the same time, there was the biggest question raised as to how these all formed. Scientists and scholars proposed countless theories at various periods, including the strangest one, the God creation. But these theories were not accepted by all until one special theory broke all mysteries, the Big Bang. When the Big Bang theory was introduced by Georges Lemaitre in the 1920s, the whole science world was delighted that everything had been answered. Subsequently, like the expansion of the universe proposed by Hubble, the unexpected capture of the cosmic microwave background further strengthened the Big Bang Theory. Research says the age of our universe is 14 billion years. It means the greatest bang happened 14 billion years ago. Although there are many questions as to who or what triggered the Big Bang, this theory has been welcomed by most people. Well, somehow the universe was formed, but did our Earth and other planets form on the same day as the Big Bang? Absolutely not. Our beautiful Earth has gradually evolved over millions of years and has reached its present state. Its 4.5 billion years history has been marked by extreme environmental conditions and tremendous catastrophes. Although no one witnessed the moments of the Earth's formation, we have obtained some answers by studying the planets within and outside the solar system. Let's see how it happened. In the first moments after the Big Bang, the universe was extremely hot and dense. As the universe cooled, conditions became just right for the formation of matter. A few millions of seconds later, quarks aggregated to produce protons and neutrons. Within minutes, these protons and neutrons combined to form the nucleus. As the universe continued to expand and cool, things began to happen more slowly. It took 380,000 years for electrons to be trapped in orbits around the nucleus forming the first atoms. Everything that exists now started from just two elements, hydrogen, helium, and a very small amount of lithium. The first stars formed out of the hydrogen atoms that existed. Hydrogens together formed the vast gas clouds from within which the first generation of stars emerged. Due to the tremendous amount of pressure at their core, new heavy elements such as oxygen, silicon, iron, and others were formed. When the first generation of stars died, they scattered those elements to space which seeded the next generation of stars. This scattering process is called supernova. As we know already, every matter in this universe has gravity. Because of this gravity, matter pulled together and galaxies began to form everywhere in the past space. Some 5 billion years ago, in a perfectly ordinary place in the Milky Way galaxy, something happened. It might have been a supernova explosion that pushed a lot of its heavy elements into nearby clouds of hydrogen gas and dust. From that kickstart, gas and dust clouds started swirling with heavy elements, and this was the beginning of our solar system. Through years of swirling and gravity, a hot, young, glowing star was formed in the center of clouds. The sun was born. Nearly 99% of the matter in the cloud dust was used to form the sun, and the remaining 1% of the hot dust was still orbiting the Sun. Young Sun began to fuse hydrogen to helium in its core. After some million years, the hot dust slowly cooled. During this time, components of the dust began to freeze out into small grains. Slowly, these grains settled together and transformed into pebbles, then boulders. Due to gravity, boulders collided with each other and grew larger. From these collisions, tremendous amounts of energy and heat were produced while nearly 400 collisions happened per minute. By the time they reached the size of hundreds of kilometers, the intensity of the collisions was enough to melt much of the materials involved. Dense elements like iron sank to the center and lighter elements stayed on the surface. The rocks, iron and other metals sorted themselves into layers. Thus, through a series of collisions, the Earth was reaching its present state. At the same time, Jupiter, the largest and highest gravitational planet in our solar system, was also forming, pulling all the meteorites towards itself. Over time, collisions on Earth stopped completely, and the situation became a bit calmer. The Earth's crust cooled down and became a habitable landscape, while the core temperature remained too high because of extreme pressure. 
The pressure of the inner core is 3.6 million times higher than the surface atmosphere, with a temperature of 5,200 degrees Celsius. The Earth is divided into four main layers. The inner core, outer core, mantle and crust. Due to the presence of large amounts of liquid iron and nickel in the Earth's core, magnetic field naturally occurred. This magnetic field protects our planet from cosmic radiation and the sun's solar wind. The solar wind is the stream of charged particles that emits from the upper atmosphere of the sun. Collisions and friction of the mantle plate give rise to mountains and volcanoes, which began to spew gases such as methane, ammonia, and carbon dioxide. Water and the atmosphere started to cover Earth's surface when natural elements, hydrogen and helium, combined with volcanic gases. The Earth's gravity dragging the atmosphere towards the Earth and preventing it from escaping. The perfect Earth has been formed. So far, we have seen a core acceleration model of planet formation. There is also another model called the Disk Instabilities Model that describes the formation of gas giant planets. We are not living on a gas planet, thus we don't need to care about this model. The perfect distance from the sun, gravity, magnetic field, gases in the atmosphere and some luck combined to make our Earth the only known planet that sustains life in the entire solar system, or maybe the entire universe. Thus our stunning Earth has evolved little by little over billions of years. However, it is now facing troubles with artificial global warming. If we can find ways to control it, our planet will be a cradle that sustains life for millions of years.